Hi, Samit. Thank you so much for joining me for Lead Time Chats. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to chat with you. So um, the topic we're going to talk about today is switching jobs after a long stint at a company and specifically how to disentangle your own identity from a company's. So Samit, you spent over two decades at Cisco, starting from when you were almost fresh out of school and making your way all the way to an SVP role before making the switch to ThoughtSpot, which is a much smaller company. So I guess to start off, you know, what is it like to be at a company for over two decades and in what ways was your identity connected to Cisco? Yeah, that's a great question, uh, Jean. Um, I uh, obviously had a huge, uh, hugely memorable journey at Cisco. And uh, uh, if I were to summarize, uh, uh, of course, there is the people angle uh, around uh, you know, spending time in a company, you get very attached to the people around you. And there's a lot of folks who support you through that journey. So you're very thankful and grateful. Uh, but I think if I were to summarize my journey at Cisco from a professional perspective, I think uh, there are two uh, words that come to mind. One is building and the other is leading. So um, uh, if I were to look at building, it was about building culture, building people's careers, helping them build their careers, essentially, uh, building teams, great teams, uh, building great products, and building a business uh, as well. So, so that uh, was quite a, quite a journey. And uh, in some ways, when you spend two decades doing that, it gets into your veins, right? Literally, uh, <laughs> it's in your blood. And uh, that's what happens. And the other aspect is leading. Obviously, we are, you know, we are always... Uh, when the situation is tough, when you have to drive change, when you have to, you know, drive transformation, uh, you just step up and you lead, and you lead when, when there is a need, right? You do at the spur of the moment, you 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 lead, and sometimes leading is also taking a back seat and letting others who are more capable lead. So we kind of went through that journey, and it has been a great journey of learning. So yes, leaving Cisco, uh, you know. I, I literally grew up there. So it was very yeah. difficult, emotional. But I think, um, you know, Darwin said that uh, it's not the strongest who survive. It's the, it's the ones who adapt. So if, I have, if there are two other words I would use, Jean, uh, that I have always focused on, it's uh, about learning and adapting, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think that's probably the key to why that change, uh, why I made that change. And understanding that why is important, Gene, because then we can talk about how do you disentangle, right? And yeah. uh, really uh, uh, help your identity blossom uh, by itself, right? So, so learning and adapting are two things that, uh, you know, I, I, if I look back at my entire life, I think those are two words that are probably crucial to how I have approached things. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, what I always look for is, am I evolving as, a, as an individual um, at, the, at, at, a, at, a, at a pace that I am satisfied with? It's my own mental model of myself, right? My own uh, self model of my identity, essentially, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, at Cisco, you know, after two decades, I was pretty comfortable with the technology, the domain, uh, the people, the systems, the processes, the tools, uh, the way of working. Uh, so it, it became a little comfortable and the rate of evolution as I perceived it for my own, my own rate of evolution was uh, uncomfortable for me. Right? I, needed it, I needed to be uncomfortable for me to be comfortable. And that probably is the why, you know, just to evolve myself faster is the main reason why I made the change. And yeah. we can talk about yeah. It sounds like one of the, the ways that you maybe that helped you wrap your head around that transition is finding the core parts of you that were there all along. So your, your desire to learn and adapt. And that was true during your time at Cisco. And then that, you know, it's not like, oh, I've been, I've been here for so long. Now I'm going to like totally change myself and re, re um, like, reconnect with my own identity or redefine myself that's that's those are sort of the things that were there all along 
Oh, absolutely. I think um, I was uh, you know, at Cisco every two to three years. You know, we had a different challenge to deal with. So yeah, learning and adapting, uh, I would say, uh, I've been throughout my life. I mean, I, I can pretty much piece that as the as the motor that drives me. So, so literally, uh, uh, you know, and that uh, reconnection or uh, that piece is is absolutely how I, I kind of centered the decision around. Yeah. So when you were considering making the switch, what was most important to you in making that transition? Yeah. So, Jean, um, I, uh, you know, I, I think um, there is obviously uh, three choices you could make. You could potentially uh, go to uh, another company or another uh, uh, corporation in the same space or maybe an adjacent space, large or mid-size, you could do that. But I felt that uh, that would be uh, much uh, somewhat similar. I mean, there will be differences, but it would be somewhat similar to what I have been doing. And I felt that I'll probably feel the same way as I felt at Cisco um, within a short period of time. So that runway looked uh, shorter to me. And I also felt that the degree of challenge was uh, not sufficient to trigger a change. Cisco is a great company. So leaving that, uh, I wanted to make sure the other, the other uh, where I was going to was compelling. The second option would be a company like ThoughtSpot, growth stage, smaller, uh, different domain, uh, uh, and uh, and uh, different market segment, different uh, you know different stage of life, uh, and that uh, you know that would be the second option. Third option would be just to go and build something all the way from scratch. I think the third one was a little uh, too jarring for me at that uh, point. I felt that I needed to have uh, this experience of uh, where I can leverage my strengths, uh, what I I have at Cisco, and also. Uh, you know, kind of learn new muscle, build new muscle in terms of building a company, helping build a company from you know a small stage to a to a to a larger larger one. And I think uh, that's kind of how I made the choice to go to that second bucket of a growth stage uh, startup. Mm -hmm. I've heard. Um, I once worked worked with a coach who said, you know, I should think about spending. I, I forgot what the percentage he said was, but like you know, 10 or 20% of my time being uncomfortable. And I'm curious if you have some sort of guideline for yourself of how, how uncomfortable you want to be to feel comfortable about how your evolution is, is going. Absolutely. That's, a, that's an insightful question, Jean. I think a place, a first, first thing you want to look for is when you're making a change because you are focused on that adapting, learning, uh, for the inner uh, development, but you know the main focus is building and leading. You want to be with people who are of that growth mindset, who believe in in the concept that people can actually go across domains. If you are a leader in one domain, you can be a leader in another domain. You can learn. You can you know grow yourself. So I think that uh, that uh, uh, that was a big condition. I, I the people I work with. Uh, was a huge condition for me, right? In terms mm -hmm. of the switch, and that reduces uh, risk because they, you can make mistakes, and it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to be stupid and ask questions when you don't know stuff, and not feel that you are being judged uh, at that yeah. time. So, so I think I wanted to choose such an environment. So, having uh, you know, once you choose that environment, Gene, to go back to your question, I think. You know, when it comes to your ability to lead, your ability to build culture, build great teams, those are skills that transport from any domain to any domain. You could be in a, you know, in a, in a charity organization and you, you, can, you have to build great teams, you have to lead, you have to build a great culture, right? So those things transcend domains. Now, building great products and building a great business obviously requires... Uh, some learning, uh, but you know, once you are in that environment where it's it's okay to learn, it's okay to ask stupid questions. You realize shortly that uh, you know there are portable skills that you have already acquired uh, through your experience, mm -hmm. and then you learn uh, some domain specific skills, and and you are able to make that impact. So I think I would say 
60-40, 60% you are able to leverage, 40% you are learning, and that's a good good place to be in. Yeah. Right. Um, so in the disentangling of your identity from that of, you know, Sameet at Cisco to just Sameet in your career and in your life, um, what was challenging in that process? I think uh, uh, unlearning, Jean. Mm. Sometimes, uh, you, know, uh, you know, when you are in a place for a long time, things are done in a particular way because in the process of building of that company, let's say when Cisco was being built all the way from zero to where it is today, a uh, lot of the systems, processes, and the way things are done were arrived at after some mistakes and some successes. <laughs> and you know, it's an iterative process of company building and value creation is an iterative process. You make mistakes, you adjust to do that. So uh, Cisco arrived at that. Many of us, because of our time there, saw that uh, in motion, but we didn't see everything, right? Mm -hmm. so, so when you come out of that environment, and let's say you are now at ThoughtSpot, you are, the, the biggest fallacy is not to just take what you know and just apply it. The, the, the unlearning is to actually look at situations very objectively, very fresh, almost like day one principles, and then see what applies and what needs to be innovated, what needs to be different, what needs to be new, uh, you know, what could be better. So asking that question every day, uh, uh, you know, helps you then become, you know, you almost go with the mentality that every day is a fresh day, right? Mm -hmm. And your experiences and your knowledge is there to be applied, but you don't apply it uh, uh, without con uh, you know conscious thinking you actually first look at the problem statement and you then apply it so that's the best way once you do that gene uh, everybody around you and more importantly you yourself have truly uh, kind of brought yourself to a state where you are you are independent of you know the domain you're you're more a, a leader and a builder in the situation that you are presented with and you can uh, use the muscles that you have ex yeah. according mm -hmm. to the need, right? So that's kind of the biggest exercise you go through. So you don't, you unlearn, you, you don't go with, you know, just default things. You, you, you basically think, you do a lot of critical thinking. Yeah. yeah, I'm hearing that part of it, part of what made that transition successful is also your innate confidence that, you know, a lot of the core, um, the core traits and the core skills that you you learned at Cisco are transferable. Right? I could imagine people being um, thinking that, oh, the experience is what's transferable, not, not realizing that they themselves have the ability to build teams, to build consensus, to, to do all these things that are you know, agnostic of um, the environment, of the company, of the technology. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, these are muscle uh, gene. And I think, you know, when you change, you're basically building new muscle, but you also have muscle from the past. So you kind of use it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about, um, so you talked a little bit about kind of the work identity, what carried over and what's new. What about your personal identity? Was there anything challenging there? I mean, imagine you have a lot of friendships. You've seen, you've built a lot of help build people's careers at Cisco. That could be a difficult transition. Yeah, I think, Gene, uh, 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 that was the most difficult part. Um, you know, once I made the decision that I'm going to leave uh, Cisco, uh, and I, I'll share it openly, I, you know, I cried a lot. But those four weeks of, you know, decision to actual uh, last day were very emotional. And it's all because of people. And you get attached to people. You get attached to their careers. You, they get attached to you. So it's, it goes both ways. But uh, what I have found is uh, that uh, uh, in many cases, the bonds turn into friendship that goes beyond work. In many cases, bonds turn into mentorship uh, type of relationship uh, and advisory relationships. And they are actually, uh, you know, you go through a refinement of those relationships over the time that you have left a place. And they become uh, truly your uh, mentors, advisors, 
um, or uh, or friends, right? In that mm-hmm. category, and and I think that's a huge. Uh, it's it's equity. It's social equity. So yes, I mean, it, it, there is a few months where there is actually both. There is uh, positive and negative emotions. Actually, uh, people. Uh, you may some people may think, why did you leave? <laughs> right? Why, why did you have to leave? And they may not uh, have enjoyed that. So I think there is a, a bit of that that happens, but you, you get through it. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually- I the longest I spent at any company was uh, fi- a little over five years at Medium, but I actually really enjoyed um, being a little bit more free and making friendships outside of a work context, right? Because I was in yes. the leadership team, and so there was always a, uh, a bit of a barrier there of, uh, you know, how I want to be equitable in social interactions. I also want to make sure that, um, you know, it's not going to be really awkward if I then have to, you know, give this person really critical feedback or work with them on performance. And so it was, it was actually a, a relief to be able to create friendships outside of that structure. It's very well said, very well said. And actually those are, you know, that refinement is so important. You know, when you've taken the work context out, what is the relationship that remains? And that's a, that's a, that's a strong relationship. It's actually, you know, more lasting one. So that's very well yeah. said. Too. Yeah, it's a, uh, an opt-in relationship, right? People are choosing to, not just because we're in the same office all the time, it's people are choosing to spend time together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, for people who are, you know, I, I know some people who have been at Google or other big companies for 10 years, 15 years. Um, I think there's a lot of fear of not knowing what's out there, especially some of these big companies can feel quite like a bubble. Um, you know, they, they're not as aware of what's going on in the rest of the tech industry. And you know, for me, looking at these people, I, uh, friends of mine, I, I feel like it's obvious you're so qualified and, you know, there's so much value that other companies would get from you. Um, but I think for them, there's a lot of fear of the unknown, um, not knowing if their skills are transferable, um, not knowing if they're going to be able to, you know, find their way at a smaller company. So having been through that, what, what advice or thoughts do you have for folks who are maybe starting to think about making that transition? Yeah, great, great question. I went through that, Gene, uh, when I was at <laughs> so long. I, would be, I was scared. I was scared to even step out. It's a bubble. Uh, but I think um, the key is to um, <clears throat> focus on a growth mindset. So be in that learning adapting mode. Uh, Know that you have skills, in inner skills and muscle that will come in handy. Be ready to build new muscle. You have to exercise. You have to break muscle to build new muscle, right? So you have to, uh, to be in that growth mindset. That's one. Second piece, if you have that, surround yourself. Pick. Uh, there is a beautiful world outside of all the big companies. Beautiful world. Uh, it's full of opportunity. It's 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 not like it's it's uh, it's a land of ocean with sharks. No, it's not. It's it's <laughs> it's, it's, it's a nice world, and um, uh, so 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 I, I think um, uh, you know uh, surround yourself with people who have that growth mindset, who will support you, uh, because they themselves believe in the fact that uh, people can uh, can go across domains and do very well, you know, or if not well, even better uh, when you when you're outside. In that domain. So do that. Uh, I think ThoughtSpot certainly uh, that the leadership team here and the environment here. I was pretty convinced, right, that this would be a place where I can be myself and not be judged and and, and really uh, uh, make that impact. So and then and then don't be too tough on yourself, right? I mean, when you make a move, uh, you could have a successful outcome, uh, in which case uh, you know uh, nothing succeeds like success. So. Uh, everybody will, you know, uh, your own perception of yourself or everyone else's perception of yourself will be positive because of that success. But even if there is a failure, it's actually a good thing. Um, uh, You know, A, you built new muscle. B, uh, learning from failures is a valuable experience for any next venture that you, uh, you know, go and join or start, right? 
Um, and, and I would go to the extent of saying that actually the big companies, the so-called comfortable bubbles would benefit most when they have people who have gone through that experience, either uh, you know, built a company to success or actually even failed at doing, uh, doing that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's valuable uh, 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 to be in a leadership position, say at a big company and, have, and having uh, gone through an experience of building a business where nothing existed almost or, right. uh, or having failed at something and you really learned why and you have uh, the ability to uh, really do it better and much, much better uh, the next time. So I think yeah. um, either way, don't be, don't be afraid. It, it, it is challenging, but take the plunge and the mm -hmm. world actually is full of opportunity outside. Yeah. I like what you said at the, uh, the end, the take the plunge and, you know, it's okay if it's not a success because I, what I see a lot of times is, you know, especially when you've spent 10 to 20 years at a company, you think your next company, you're also going to spend 10 to 20 years, right? But that's not, I mean, if it doesn't work out, it could be six months, it could be one year, it could be two weeks if it's really not a good fit and it doesn't have to be, you know, there's a lot of pressure to put on one, what, the, the right fit if you think you're going to spend another decade or two at that company, right? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And I think in a smaller setting, uh, Jean, we have the opportunity to shape it and build it into we, what we in some ways want it to be. Mm -hmm. so, so it's it's you know it's in your hands i always say in the startup the biggest bet you make is on yourself actually so that's that's how i describe it yeah well thank you so much i think this will be really useful to a lot of people who are maybe thinking about that transition or have made it already thanks for joining me today absolutely thank you for having me Jean. and uh, it was a pleasure pleasure to chat on this topic